So um, we'll call the meeting to order at official time of 7.06. And um, the first item on the agenda, Kristen? Oh, it is um, review and approval of minutes. Okay. So I was not at the last meeting, but um, for those of you that were there at the last meeting, have the minutes look okay? I was here. The minutes look fine. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, minutes. Yes. All the all yes, those yes. in favor. Okay. Approved. Minutes are approved. <laughs> <coughs> okay. And next is financial statement um, warrants, but we will come back to that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then um, unfinished business. Let's see what we can go to. Um, discussion. We should probably jump to the principal's report. We can do that. Is that okay? Yes, please. Okay. So I put in front of you a principal's report and a school improvement plan update. So the principal report, thank you for approving, for uh, supporting our budget. We so appreciate our Conway Grammar School, the education we're able to give the students. Assessments, we've been, um, so the school improvement plan, just our update is there for you. Um, We've been, we just jumped right to principal. We're doing okay. what we can before we'll come right back to you. Okay. Um, assessments, we finished up the MCAS in grades three, four, five, and six, ELA and math. And grade five did science. Um, the kids were, we couldn't ask for a harder working group of kids. They, they gave it all, they're all, they had growth mindsets. And we're just finishing up the NEWA. So in the June meeting, I'll bring some data for you on that. Our summer programming, since our school is going to be closed for four or five weeks due to the water line, we're, we're offering, we're back to offering the reading camp and STEM camp at Deerfield and Waitley, which is what we've done in the past. We only ran our own summer program the past two years, and we'll get back to that next year. But we have, right now we have about 10 kids signed up for the reading camp and about nine kids signed up for the STEM camp. We had a great staff appreciation week from our fabulous PTO. We have an arts night on Wednesday, June 5th. This is going to be something a little different than the school show. We're trying a little something different. Um, all The sixth grade will be doing a performance, actually. <coughs> and then we're going to do some artwork and genius projects and robotics projects and a variety of different things. And all, then all the students will be performing um, a song with Mr. Tracia. So we're going to try something new this year. I have a, I have a question about that. Yeah. Um, so I got the... I think I got a flyer yeah. that had all the important dates. Yes. Um, but this is, you know, some new stuff. I'd love to. Was it mentioned that the there was going to be art tonight, June fifth? Yeah. Yes. Just the way, like, but that they'll also have the. Uh, so we're going to have a flyer going the home tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Yes. Cool. Yeah, we were just trying to wrap. We just had a staff meeting that yesterday, wrapped up all the yeah. final details. So. Yeah, with all that new stuff going on, it'd yeah, be great to message. Yeah. Yeah. Out, so. yeah. Our breakfast pro program will start up in the fall. We're going to have a cart style, well, hot and cold. Um, students who are free or reduced will continue to get it free and reduced, and other students can pay, and they can pay for a la carte or full meal. I just wanted to mention that we have a new, I haven't mentioned this throughout the year, but we have had a new out-of-school time director, Jackie Cheek, yeah. who's done a great job this year. Um, we had a great director before. We're wondering how the transition would be, and she's done a great job this year. Would you? Agree, Michael. You. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's a different vibe. They're two different yeah. people, but yeah. um, when I pick up my kids, they don't want to leave. <laughs> Good. Love that. That's yeah. great. So, Good. Yeah. Um, our early release days in May. We had two school-based days. Once we one we worked on curriculum, and the other one we did some work on growth mindset, and then we had a teacher collaboration day. Our teachers will be doing some summer work. Um, we'll be aligning the standard uh, science standards, and our instructional team and our professional development team will be meeting um, during the summer also to get us ready for the school year. I have a, just a great staff. <laughs> they, they just they are willing to put in whatever they need to put in to make it a great school. So thank you for your support. Couldn't do it without your support. So thank you. Does anyone have any questions for me? Kristen, when the school's being closed down, since the water was fixed, I mean, there's no, like, we don't have to come in and, like, flush it or drain it or do anything Correct. weird. It should be just 
set to go and closed up for the summer. Correct. Right? Yes. Knock on wood. Correct. Okay, good. Knock on wood. Correct. Right. Yes. And we're doing it first thing. They're going to start the day after school gets out. So whatever time, you know, they might need a shorter amount of time. But last time we started in August, so remember what yeah. that was like. We had a time yeah. crunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which might have caused, you know, it not to set or whatever the right words are. Pure. Yeah. We love our hydration station. Kids think that's the coolest thing. Ever. That is the way to go. Yeah. People noticed it at town meeting, I saw. Yeah, we, we, yeah, great. They didn't get to notice the new hand dryers, though. <laughs> no, but I do notice now there's two different styles of paper towel holders. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> well, That's this so funny. Looks like there's lots of wonderful things happening to wrap up the year. Yeah, so we're really excited. And we miss the little guys when they're away on mm. their break. And then Mark, we're, okay, so I'm sorry, Michael, we, uh, back to number three, financial statement and warrants. Sure. So you have a warrant in front of you for 10 items totaling $91,284.73. I got it. You got it? Mm -hmm. All over like a cheap suit. Um, so you have the results of operations through April. Um, so through April, there's $571,000 and change remaining or about 30% of the budget. The budget continues to track according to plan. However, two things to note and bear watching through the remainder of the year is that if you notice the um, substitute function, there's about $50 less left in it. So that's likely to run over in the next two months. Um, and with the additional um, sub-teaching support that we needed earlier in the year, November and December, that's why it's almost fully expended at this point. Um, also the custodial line, because of the extra sub-expenses that were incurred this year, will also run over budget once salaries are fully expended. Um, so one of the things that we did was conduct a review of the salaries because obviously one of the things that the budget doesn't tell you is where are we going to land with salaries because um, <laughs> salaries aren't encumbered because they're paid on the town side of the accounting software. So what I did was I did this document that I gave to you all and what this is is all the salary lines in the Conway budget. So the first column is the budget balance remaining, and that's as of the 15th of this month. The encumbered balance is for the Conway salaries, how much we anticipate spending to pay everyone out through FY19. So you can see that totals $375,000 and change. And then the column with the difference is the over or under based on the budget amount. So you can see that overall, the salaries for all the Conway um, staff are over budget projected by about $2,500 and of course part of this is because of the sub lines that we've had gone over so it's it's not a huge concern so in continuing the projection we took the total encumbrance that we know we're going to pay up for the salaries uh, for Conway staff and then we also took the assumption that all of the budget balances for the shared staff shared services staff which is $34,000 at the bottom of that middle column if we subtract that from what we have available for the budget when I ran it as a 515, because I included the, the most recent um, salary that's been posted, that's 510,000 uh, available. So if you subtract the 375 and the 34 from that, the budget has for the next two months about $100,000 of funds available for non-salary. So not in bad shape, and that's why we say projected to land on budget because one, most of the expenses that we have are encumbered. We do have encumbrances in there that are included in there. So that's the available funds that we have to, to go through the remaining of the year with the assumption that salaries are all going to be paid. Mark, in, in this list, Mark, um, where would I find uh, uh, food service salaries? Food service. Let's, I have to look and see if that is in the budget or if it's in I thought the revolving. The first year I thought the first year, wasn't it said that we weren't paying anything the first year? <coughs> there was some, do you remember that? It said that the first year we weren't. Um, okay, I think that. we're in year two or three by now. But I, no, this is, no, this is the first year. So yeah, food, I don't know. So I don't food remember. service is, is FRD in this listing and in the budget it's on page five and it's like the third line down. So it's a, it's, allocated about $4,600 for the year. 
And right now there's 12. All right, so, so that's the food service director line item. You're right. Our share of the frontier food service. But where would I find in, like our own food service employees? Oh, sorry about that. In, but well, I mean, but you, those are both questions yeah. I'd love. I mean, yeah. but I mean, I'm just looking at this salary to see the salary list to see if everything, whatever. And, I mean, are, are there categories of salaries that aren't on this list that are not accounted for in your well, those the assurances get, that all is well? Right. Well, those get charged to the revolving account for food service. Okay. So it's not in the general fund budget. All right, I actually understood that answer. Okay. So basically, um, as I said, it was about a hundred thousand dollars remaining to the <coughs> for the next two months, excluding salaries, which are now all encumbered based on the calculations. Um, and just to note, there's just been a lot of repairs over the last couple of months. The, the HVAC and heating has had a lot of issues. It's probably been over ten thousand dollars. But even at that, you know, the budget is still on, in tracking to expend in the black. And the special revenue funds. Um, like the uh, early childhood and the school choice are tracking according to plan as well. There's no, um, they're in the back of the budget here and they're tracking according to plan as well. Um, there are a lot of things when Bruce was out that he could have taken care of that we had to call someone in for and I think that's why we want. And plus we have quite a few motors on our heaters blow. I think we have four motors blow this year, which is a lot. Hmm. So they're new now and they'll last? I don't know. I don't know when they'll last. Hopefully. Ones. They don't like them like they used to. <laughs> so, um... Any questions? So, the, the, so if I understand it, the plan is that with the X, you, you're antici we're anticipating to go over in 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 custodial sub and in uh, <coughs> sub sub so there's money from salaries left over to do that that's the plan there's money left over in the overall budget if you look at that listing the salaries themselves if everything went to plan you can see that well currently right now if you look at the sub line which starts with the negative 32 31 that one's over and then sped subs is positive by 26 and this the um, pre-K subs is at 450, so that's got a balance of 49 dollars right now. If you add those together, but there will probably be more of those going through, so that will tip negative. And you can see the custodial uh, so, uh, salary line down towards the bottom, which is where the custodial sub gets paid out of, is projected to go over by six thousand dollars. But the overall totaling of all the salaries is 2,500. And then, of course, you know, in the non-salary lines, you don't necessarily always expend everything. Um, that you have budgeted, so there's that additional hundred thousand dollars that can absorb the difference in the salaries. There's there's two warrants in here. One's for the carpet. Learning, uh, learning lab. We took the right. hired. Yes. So that's that's all set, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's good. And then there was the the plumbing one. Is that from the the tank work done in? Says August and December. That's what it says August and December. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see those yeah. actually. Those go. Uh, okay. Wow. Okay. <coughs> yeah. See, this is this. I think is being charged to the town. It says school capital water water ah uh, water well article nine. So. It's coming through, and you're approving the fact that it needs to be paid, but it's being submitted to the town to be paid on a warrant that was already oh. approved by the town. Okay, from the tank work. Yeah. Done in August. Okay. All right. I mean, that's that's all well and good. The problem with that is that there's no one place that's counting. Like, if, if we're trying to keep in track, um, how much of these repairs costing us, and I, there's like not one any one place where. <clears throat> I know it's. I guess it's the town administrator's responsibility to get the contractor to reimburse X, Y, or Z. Right. But uh, you know, I, I don't know. There's no one person that's 
like in charge of what I, I the technically he is, but does he know about this? Well, well, you bring up a good point because I said to Mark about a month ago, so ago when we were running over, I said, you know, I said, gee, Mark, some of these bills, which Mark wouldn't know, you know, are, I think, going to be, re are supposed to be reimbursed, you know, some of these, the plumbing for the water tank and all those extras. Um, Right, and, so, and they're redoing the tank in June. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, the, when that plumbing, right? Mm -hmm. It's all the work we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're going right. to have to come back and do it again so, in June. So I, mean, I guess a solution would be for, <coughs> can the school committee ask you to forward that bill to the town administrator with a note saying the school committee asked sure, to I see if this gets that. reimbursed by the manufacturer or whatever? Sure. And that, that might just be the way to go with yeah. all these things that you think might fall into that category to say yeah. the school committee is asking you to yeah. otherwise uh, the problem with like your professional town administrator class is that they don't really have skin in the game and, uh, hmm. yeah because i know bob on our side of you know it identifies the bills that should be part of that project versus general repairs, so that's how they get on the warrant that goes on the town side. But you know, to your point, yeah, tracking it on the town side for reimbursement's a whole separate town issue. Thank you. All right. Well, that's good. We're not going to go broke this year. Nope. Next year, who knows? This year, we'll see. Um, Always makes me happy. Well, yeah, me too. Michael, when you go back to the new business, I think Phil and I could probably speak to the comprehensive school health grant. D did you talk about it at your frontier meeting? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, our, our, uh, our, I was going to say school nurse, but now she's nurse. Leader? No. Yeah, now she's nurse leader, but now she's about right. to transition into something else because to be, this is a, a new title altogether. Yeah. So, She's not just a nurse leader, she's like super nurse leader now. Mm -hmm. The whole, yeah. And um, uh, there's more stuff to it. It sounded more impressive than ever. Yeah, so we wrote, we wrote a comprehensive <laughs> school health grant. What was that for detail? We wrote a comprehensive service health grant for the whole district that included a um, .5 nurse leader. Mm -hmm. That would consult throughout the whole district. Oh. Right now, it's here's the scope of services of that. Oh, sorry, we are just moving along. I yeah, appreciate except it. For your, except for your part. So we come in without a bridge pro. That's it. The bridge program. <clears throat> Let me jump right in. Yeah. Kind of goes here the whole time. So you just you just open this up. No, we, we've been going, yeah, this topic yeah. just opened up. Yeah, right. we covered so, a lot of ground so far. So, um, so basically we applied for the um, Comprehensive School Health Service Grant and we're awarded $55,000 a year for the next four years. Um, we applied for 70000 got fifty five because of either some, we appealed because of our SCS as a our social economic status um, and those students in of higher need is higher percentage when you include the elementary to Frontier. Frontier alone is a little bit higher, um, lower needs rather. You have higher needs when you add all the elementaries. Um, but they use just Frontier's numbers when doing this. And they said that the grant didn't specify that Union 38 was not the same number as Frontier, though when you look at it, that's debatable. So we appealed to try to get more that didn't happen. Um, but basically the importance of and why grants go to the school committees for approval is basically the year four contingent, uh, contingency on this is that, not contingency, the year four stipulation of this grant is that the salary goes on to local budget. So that we'll be getting $220,000 over four years, $55,000 a year, but that fourth year, even though we're getting the $55,000, you can't use that money to pay the salary, which is about $40,000 for the part-time. And, and that, what I just handed out was a page that shows you kind of a basic outline of a budget um, <coughs> for this grant. So, so for basically, you know, currently we have a, a nurse leader stipend of around $12,000 per year. So if we saved up that nurse 
leader stipend that's not really how budgets work but if we saved up for that over the four year over the next three years we'd be close to paying for it that way um, it is a regional thing so Conway would be getting its share which is probably around you're talking about um, uh, probably about 10 percent so you're talking about a four thousand dollar commitment to this okay. position on, on, on that end <coughs> on the grant end so Good. the grant gets renewed a year four so um, next thing would be uh, what's holding us to make sure we do the grant obviously the, in order to receive this grant we have to file reports about our status and what we're doing each year um, and then the fourth year we have to apply to get the extension the grant. there's two two years extensions at the year after year four so at that time it'll come back before the school committee and we can decide whether or not we want to continue funding it as a position as a as a um, 0.5 position or do we want to go back to the stipend model you know so there is a kind of a check-in point rather than that kind of you're out of position and it kind of kind of goes away into the night and then all of a sudden it's in our budget for the next 10 years and we asked how did it get there um, but these are how the gr these are how grants are set up they're set up to try to get the the school or whatever government body to buy in they kind of get you hooked but you know um, I think the you know I put a lot of thought into this because I wasn't sure if, um, you know that hook always kind of upsets me that they're kind of you know they're making us you know kind of buy into and they come kind of, up with money later right? yeah in, in the end you're, you're you know they're they're tricking you into expanding your services there um, but I talked with Louise and Sarah who do a lot of grant stuff and they said that's how it always is and you, know, you just got to keep an eye on it play a little smarter but you really they said if you said no to this you're throwing away $180,000 that we can do to improve health services they said you they said when you look at it through that lens as long as we do our our jobs as with oversight we should, we should be fine so and what it's and, and Meg Birch is the nurse is the proposed uh, nurse manager under this right correct and what it's uh, what it's adding for services is really important I mean uh, yeah. uh, for you know, students that are uh, at the can't think of the right word they're just vulnerable right yeah. vulnerable students who are able to support them in ways that we might not be able to otherwise yeah absolutely in a, in a, the you know, you don't have to read it now, but it, when you, you're on the opposite, I think it's page, gosh, where is it? the last page, the bullet points is a nice little summary of the, of what the health services model program is, but kind of just talking about the different major areas that's going to go into. But one of the big things is that we have a lot of, you know, we have five schools with nurses that are, are just barely keeping up with systems and procedures. Um, they are keeping up. I don't think we're falling behind, but you know they could have stronger systems and procedures, and this is going to allow them to have time. Because part of this position and part of the money in this grant is to give them professional development time and pay for a nurse sub to come in so that they can learn more about either the software, the tracking information. Or there's more and more students that are on medications. You know, we're seeing an uptick in diabetes, um, in the, the monitoring that the school nurse has to do. So all that kind of training and stuff falls within that grant alone as well. It's not just um, when you look at uh, within the, the, the uh, budget page there, when you talk about consultants, that consultant's not just outside people talking, it's also allowing, paying for professional development for our people to go out either to meet together to work on something or to also go out and receive trainings and that kind of stuff. So, good. I, so I need a vote yeah. from you guys to say okay. yay or nay on that. I have a motion to approve. I'll second it. All, right. All in favor of approving the comprehensive yes. school health services grant? Yes, yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. Can I just mention that so Conway will be looking for a seventeen point five hour nurse part time nurse. So that because it's a thirty five hour week. Yeah. So we'll be looking for a seventeen point five hour nurse. We put an anticipated opening out and we have some good candidates. A teacher, one of the teachers and I will be in the room. If you approve, what would you get? 
Right, because because the candidate for this is going to need to fill this role, right? Is that what you're saying? No, Meg, well, Meg, Meg is doing that, so this is the other half of her position. That's what I mean, right, yeah. And so we're four out of five there, by the way, on this screen. Four out of five? I mean, I know that kind of we got the last vote in on huh. the budget, but right now you're four out of five. We're weed in. We have Wheatley to, to weigh in as well. But everybody else, oh. has, everybody else has approved this grant. Excellent. Okay. It's one of the problems of having to do that when we don't do some of this stuff should have happened like a joint meeting. Mm -hmm. We weren't awarded this until after the joint meeting, so I have to take it for committee to committee getting. And then I don't know what happens if one committee says no. Well, uh, kind of, I guess I know what happens. I guess oh, okay. it, it ends. We figure it out. Would it still end if the other four towns would absolve the 10%? And then that that nurse leader doesn't oversee the nurse of that particular district. <coughs> yeah. Are um, you foreseeing this not? Oh, no, I think this will go through. Okay. But but in the future, if we ever had one school not wanting to buy in um, because their needs are different, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I mean the the headaches of our configuration is just mind numbing. Because yeah. <laughs> there's no, what do you do? We're not built for shared services. Yeah, it's not right. We you know, in the you know, really there should be a complete waste of resources, but there'd be more joint meetings, but having twenty five meeting people around the table isn't exactly efficient, nor does it have pure representation because you don't want to ask a question because there's twenty five people sitting around the table and it's like, you know, you don't want to be that person or maybe you want to be that person right. and then the twenty four other people are like, What's going on? So So there's um, good sides to our current organization. In terms of rep yeah. the way we run, do business now, yeah. there are some good things about it. But no, there but is there's there complications. Is. Yeah, there is. So, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't want to jump into your meeting. What's next on the agenda? The next thing. Or is she's who's running the meeting? Well, I, I, <laughs> sorry, I have to pull up the, the agenda on my phone because no, I don't have oh, printed copies. The non-salary copy, so. recommendations. All right, so can we move, you. Mr. Chair? Can we move that to you are chairing this, right? Yes. You're the second. Uh, can we move that to the end because this committee executive session? Yes. We can do all the executive session at the end. There's no business afterwards, so we can allow people to. All right. Sure. Um, The performance evaluation of the superintendent is the next one. Should just Correct. Keep, yes, I'm sorry, Darius. Yeah. Um, so we started talking about we haven't done an evaluation. I mean, even though it was kind of my interim year, but we really have to start looking at evaluation because that's one of the things that the school committee does. But um, talking about it, I think we had a good conversation on last Tuesday at the regional, and I also had some good conversations at um, I guess at every meeting so far um, regarding this. The fact that we wanted to make it meaningful, but we also have to fall under the state guidelines of it um, to agree that it's mandated that you, 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 you file that. So <clears throat> where we kind of left it at Frontier, um, at the Frontier meeting, which you know, Phil was at and such, um, was that I, I, I have a digital outline of the superintendent evaluation that I got from um, Judy Hool. Um, and which will allow members to take it a lot more easier than the paper one where you had to go through that you can kind of go into a Google Forms kind of thing. Um, the Frontier Committee suggested that um, I put in bullets for each standard of things I've worked on. In the past, what was happened was there was these binders that were created by the superintendent putting hundreds of hours worth of work. You, um, Dr. Carey did it in her first year. Uh, Marty Barrett did it in her years, but trying to create evidence that these things were met. So instead of evidence, we kind of went the route of, you know, you don't want me working on proving to you I'm doing my job, you want me to do my job. It's just putting in bullets of things that are we're working on each one of the standards. And if you have questions or you want follow-up or you want evidence where you could say, I don't believe that you're building a rocket to go to the moon. You know, show us that, and I can bring you behind Frontier where the rocket's waiting. Um, but you understand what I'm saying? Like, if I talk about I can make a list instead of showing, giving you all the long report of a data of like I'm working on the capital plan instead of, you know, working to improve facilities, I can say the frontier capital plan, the capital plans for, you know, each elementary school, that kind of, you know, those kind of things as an example. 
and just for this June to see, and we'll try it in this digital form with this kind of way. And then next October, you know, that we'll have the new school goals and strategic plan moving forward um, to present. And then my next evaluation can be based off that, but we can see if we like this digital format and then how members felt about using that for giving me feedback. Because the evaluation is not just about whether or not I'm proficient, it's about helping guide me and my administrative team of where we want to go. Does that make sense? It's not just, I mean, hire and fire of a superintendent is most time happens outside of the evaluation. Um, and so, um, but it also gives a way to give public feedback. It's everything's public, you're welcome. And I said this to all the other meetings as well. You're welcome to give me feedback, you know outside of this or it's not public feed, um, a public um, evaluation but my evaluation is public so we have to you know part of this is about where we going as a where we're going as a direction of the school system and you know areas you want to see more attention in or that kind of stuff based on the evaluation so I don't know so that's kind of where we're at in talking about that I can think of our training that we got at MASC about how we can set goals as a school committee and that sounds like it's a way to then share our goals with, with you through feedback. Yeah. yeah. And then that's the other, you know, when we talk about it's good to have goals from as from a school committee about, you know, what does the committee want to accomplish in a given year? And then those become instantly for my goals to help you accomplish those. And for example, if you wanted to change the way you did the budget process, or you wanted to, you know, if there was something that was broken, Conway's a pretty darn good system right now, in the yes. sense that it's a, it's a well-run, it's a well-run well school, it's a well, it's doing a, an excellent job, mm -hmm. so, you know, setting goals sometimes can be, you don't want to set goals, right. you don't want to jump, make That's hoops to dump, jump through just for fun, you know what I mean, well, maybe, it's fine, but, but, but maintaining um, our current system is a good goal. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, I, w when I went to those trainings and, and I heard that, yeah, MASC wants you to do it in a specific format, and um, but the, they don't, the, uh, <coughs> DESE doesn't save them, and there's nobody that reads them, and they actually do just throw them out when they get them. And when I heard that, I'm like, if, if there's a law and there's no penalty for violating it, then it's not really a law, it's kind of like an advisory recommendation. Um, right, and that's kind of where, you know, I mean, the, you know the part of me is just, I don't want to do it at all. I mean, I got yeah, a lot of other stuff yeah, to do. And that's what but at the I same would, time, I encourage it's, that part, it, but it, give voice same, to that part. But at the same time, as I, I'm trying to make it streamlined in the sense of not spending a ton of time putting it together. Right. You know, once we create this um, digital thing, it, you know, it'll just be updating it from year to year. Um, what we, I saw from my administrator seat, not in the superintendent seat, was a lot of people didn't do it. Even when there was trying times with the superintendent, where there was you know, maybe some conflict, there was plenty of, this, is, this doesn't allow me to give proper feedback to what I really feel because it's too constraining. And I think that was really voiced at the Frontier meeting that they, they didn't, some members didn't want to use it at all. They want to just write down what they, what they like and what they dislike or, you know, um, give us a, Give us an agenda of everything you've done in the last year. I mean, I have it actually. I have my my monthly agenda is tracked of where I go, who I meet with, and that kind of stuff. Right. Um, you know, but having that, you can see, oh yeah, he's, you know. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I've never seen one before, but it seemed like the last one I got under the other that was over the top. Am I wrong? Yeah. There was it, that was so lengthy that. Okay. The evidence? I didn't know if that was. That's what the, I mean, and that's what it was my, huge. And, and that's like where, a stack of paper. And that's, you know, the program you're talking about, you go to the training, that's what they're asking people to do. And right. I don't see the full value of no, it. I and I don't see the full value, value of it in the way we're set up as well. Because each school committee has a different level of, you know, I just left the school committee where it was, it's been budget and all budget all year long. Because they're, you know, some of them was in a t had a very difficult year. And they got through it and were very happy. Um, but it hasn't been budget only here. I mean, we talked about a lot of other things and a lot of other things are priorities. So, you know, the goals right are there. not equal between the two committees, yet there's five members in each committee. You know, right. but like, so I'm thinking about, <laughs> I'm thinking you know. about like, 
how I can improve my sharing of evidence as a teacher for my eval. And I'm, I think I'm just going to go with a shared folder link. And the folder is like the category, and I can put artifacts in that. Instead of trying to share an artifact and share an artifact and share an artifact and share an artifact. Right. So like if it's around, you know, communication with school committees, there could be a folder with your, you know, the reports that you prepare for uh, our meetings, mm -hmm. just as a way to have a place where we could go look, you know, at, oh yeah, that's what we did back in November or something like that. Right. But I don't know. And again, that's one of those things like how many of the 20... Five school committee members are going to go yeah. to a folder. They know exactly I, how they feel, or they know exactly what they right. like to see improved, just from having conversations with people or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess sometimes it would be, what are we doing in? If a concern came up on something, you know, what are we doing in this area? Right. You know, um, I guess they could then go look under that, or they could just send me a note. Well, and just say, be like a, in this area? a way to make a <laughs> digital binder instead yeah. of. A printed well, that's binder. that's the idea. Yeah. Of the, yeah, the digital form to make that a little more streamlined, and then, yeah. um, and then it, it was was also said to have an area for comments of. It's not just selection, but you can comment on each area. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean it's a pretty, and it's also a pretty boring thing because it's either your profession. If your needs improvement, you got to explain to me why it needs improvement. You can't just hit needs improvement. Um, and if you're exemplary, you got to explain why. So it's it, it's set up that people are proficient. Self-selecting. You know, and then, yeah. I don't know. It, it, to me, I don't look at it as an evaluation toward renewal. I look at it as an evaluation of are we, on, are we going in the same direction or what we want to be going, if that makes more sense. Because when it comes to renewing my, my contract, I'm not even talking about the exit. I haven't even started my contract yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's not going to be, okay, Q, let's go pull up the last five evaluations. It's going to be whatever's going on that year right. and the temperament of where people are at that kind of year. And if I said, well, I had all provision evaluated, no, you can say, thank you. We had a nice run and we're going to go a different direction is what's going to be said. And then, or it won't be said, they'll say everything's going great. And, you know, that kind of, so it's, you know what I mean? I just, I just try to be realistic to what the goal of the evaluation is. Mm -hmm. And it's really more about communicating, like, geez, we'd like to see a little more emphasis when we come to the meeting, when we talk about the budget or something, that you have more insight as to direction on, you know, that, or when, you know, whatever the, all right? Okay. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah, I just hope it doesn't seem like busy work to you. And it, it's, it, um, it, 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 that's my fear, but I'll, I'll let you know. It's also, yeah. as I do this mini kind of thing, I'll know how long it took to put together and... It's got to kind of, I don't want to say both, so I'll do whatever you guys instruct me to do, but I want to be able to get feedback that says, oh yeah, this took me right. 10 hours to put together and be like, right. well, this isn't worth two. You know what I mean? Or right. you know, that kind of thing, what part is it useful? So I wanted to at least start something this year, because yeah. originally I was like, I don't want to, it was interim year, I don't have to really be evaluated. You evaluated by me by giving me a contract, right? Yeah. Um, but I think it'd be good to do a little kind of test run. It's almost like a survey. Or yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah. So, okay. I, I mean, this is the, this would be the fourth iteration of superintendent <laughs> surveys I'll be experiencing, and uh, uh, that'll be the one that gets the most comments. Is I, what was it like to do this survey? Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, so so far I can say that I've not gotten a thing out of any of them. So, Phil, stay optimistic. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Prove you wrong. Yes, Prove yes. Yeah. You have so far <laughs> in every respect. <laughs> Mindset. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Yeah. Good. All right. So, what's the next thing on this thing? Uh, my agenda. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, center oh, office central staff office. changeover. So okay. just kind of keeping people up to date. Um, I know I sent out a lot of emails, but um, we all know the lease law is finishing up in the next month or so. And um, Kim McCarthy, you got my email there, is going to be taking her position. Um, I am in the final stages of replacing Kim McCarthy as the early childhood director's position. Um, so that'll be uh, hopefully by the end of the week announced that. Um, in this in these conversations, um, other school committee members have asked, you know, do I think about reorganizing in the sense of trying to save money through administrative costs? Because whenever you have a vacancy, are we looking at that? 
and I and I just explained at my last meeting that I really didn't see a way to reduce. I could see a way to expand. You know what I mean? In the sense of, I didn't expand, but I could see in the sense of reduction the amount that the early childhood coordinator is doing in all the schools, and the amount of students that um, that position services, and the amount of you know early sped intervention and that kind of stuff that's being done. I can't see a reduction there. But it was just brought up, and I just wanted to kind of extend that I, that those conversations were happened. Okay. Um, Bob Lesko's last um, week is the first week in August. I currently have the facilities director position posted, and we'll be doing interviews in June. Um, so we'll see where that goes. And I hope to have about probably about a week overlap. Um, as you know, you guys go to Shelly um, Pareda in for the business manager position. Um, she is going to start. She's going to do about. Like, like eight or ten days in June, um, and then the full month of July with an overlap with TMS. So with Mark and Judy um, to help with the onboarding and and doing that. And so they and they've been great about um, helping me get that kind of set up for <coughs> that transition. So that's been very good. I did hear a suggestion for somebody that um, they thought in her first week or so she should just do the little tour of the town halls <coughs> and just in, stop in and introduce herself everywhere. Yep. Is yep. And I think that's um, I agree. And, and getting to know each, and, and I also on the list meeting with each principal, kind of going over the highlights of the budget, you know, as aside from all the X's and O's that happen behind the computer screen, so to speak. But we'll get lost in very quickly. Um, so, anyway, those are the positions there. About that, that's what I want to talk about there. And then next is the school committee meeting date. Hmm. So, our next school Sorry. committee in June, there was a conflict. The building's going to be closed. closed. The building's closed. Yeah. So we can do a couple of things. We can move it because we don't have to meet here. Um, uh, we can move. We can meet in any public building, um, which probably be we need. So we have that. The other. Did you guys talk about the fact that we have a vacant chair and we got to figure out what we're going to do there? Did that no, come up at all yet? No. All right. So um, you know, Dr. Campbell's out of town on uh, business. But the Iris position, yeah. Ira wrote himself in, didn't write himself in, but had some couple write-in votes. Yeah. Um, and then someone else had a couple write-in votes. So we were instructed by the <coughs> town clerk to give a recommendation for the vacant position because no one was officially elected. Apparently, I don't know if there was enough write-in votes or what the story was there. Um, I had a conversation with Ira today. He is stepping down from his his work on the school committee. So um, so he's not an option anymore. Yeah. The other person who did a write-in vote, um, this, so I found this out about midday, um, but I heard about Ira stepping down, so that, you know, he was kind of probably the no-brainer moving forward. I mean, it's up to the committee, but, you know. Hello. The other person was written in, I believe, in every vacant position. So I'm not sure if that is a true. Oh my God! He's, if that is a true interest but, or someone who's really looking to get active. All but two, or just one. Well, he's only he's only on this. He would um, be available as like a backstop <clears throat> to you if you decide to uh, that you don't want to do that. But, um, <laughs> Which I, I just yeah, he he sends confusion there. He said I thought I was going to go on, and then it didn't happen, and then so there was amongst the communication. So I'm not getting in the middle of any of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you were on the ballot, um, so you got elected, so you got to do it. Unless you don't want to. No, I'm not you don't want to. Out. I'm just. All right. All right. The other, well, I mean, the other question is whether or not you wanted to do both. And that's why I called you today because I didn't know you were leaving this to do Frontier. No, I'm not leaving. Um, nope. Okay. Thank you. So. I'll just do both. Okay. Woohoo! Um, but somebody else has to take a collaborative. I've mentioned that. I haven't been going, so somebody else. What did they do for dinner? I'm in June. June. Um. We were, so we got to, you know, we didn't do that. Son of, uh, we said we're going to decide when we're going to read. So I don't think we should reorganize until September because we don't even know who's going to be on the committee until this committee. I've never seen it this way. Usually the select so, board just chooses Wait, someone. so who's the other person that's or written in? the select board is looking for a recommendation? Yeah, the, a recommendation from the school that? committee is always yeah. what they... Is it was that normally happens? Yeah, so the existing committee. We don't have a recommendation for this month, so we're going to do the recommendation next month. But who else was written in? You can't say. No, it's public. It's on the it's public website. Information it's around. Hazel Goldman. And she was written in for... Hazel? All but two. I think all but two. <laughs> she got two so, right in votes for that's everyone. That's awesome. Yeah, but do you hear me? Yes. 
like for so I don't all know. she was written in yeah, for constable she was written in for <laughs> a, a bunch of other things so we didn't know Select if board. she has oh, if her siblings were putting oh. a fast one on her okay, or okay, if she was okay, really interested in getting involved so in we, a lot of someone has to contact her and see if she wants to i don't think so no not according to when i contacted took her office it said that you had to appoint some you had to oh. recommend someone but we knew that ira had taken on one last year right I already said he was going to stick around. He actually made the decision today. So okay. I was All right. We were in a email back and forth when he finally said, "You know what? I actually, this is actually probably an easy way for me to step down." Okay. So. All right. I just want to say because of my I was in Amherst. If that tells you anything about my confusion <clears throat> as to the phone call, I was in a very hot greenhouse with crazy people that live in Amherst. So I was kind of like, "What? What the heck is?" But well, when I called you today. <laughs> What's you were in a marijuana <laughs> greenhouse? No, 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 no. I was in a very hot greenhouse in Amherst okay. with a line of angry people, which is why I was kind of confused on the phone. It's not my okay. usual. That's right. That's fine. <laughs> You're off the hook. I'll, I'll change it's that not in my not notes. How I usually answer <laughs> not, the com phone. not completely out of it. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm a natural person to volunteer for the collaborative part. I would um, say that you are the natural person that you should do it. I just finished my program with them and so I know the I have lots of contacts there. So. Well, we can just kinda of take over for later. You can appoint yourself as being chair right now. <laughs> I nominate you, Michael. <laughs> so why don't you just go you can go I don't yeah. you know, I think you probably should do a reorganization yeah. in September when we have the new membership, but I don't think anybody's I've never seen anybody fight over the collaborative position. Yeah. So I'll be honest, I've never right. seen a contested <laughs> No, it's just a matter of here. But it's it's one of those to go if you can, right? But you yes. try to go. Right? No, they'll email you. They'll they email want a head count because yeah. they feed you. Yeah. So okay. great. So they, they want to know when you're coming, but you can miss meetings. Is what yes. You're yeah. It's yes. every other right. month too. It's every other month, and you know, if you, go to, if you can go oh, to, okay. you know, three a year, I think is what I is <clears> probably the going number amongst most of the members of yeah. the thing. So yeah, I just have to think of family so obligations. If we see someone who's a good candidate. <clears throat> I think what we probably, we should, probably should do is nominees, possible nominees that this committee put together should be then sent to the chair for her. It really becomes, becomes her job, becomes Elaine's job to contact them, see if they're interested, okay. bring the names forward to the next school committee meeting, have you guys vote to recommend someone to move forward, and then it goes to the select board for them to then do the paperwork to start in September. Okay. And we just run with a four-person board through the hard work of June. Right. It's not good. <laughs> but, but if you have a name, you, you you should bring it forward. I mean, if you could come up with a name. I approached it's not, somebody not last year, and I got a hmm, so I didn't push it. So. So I mean, right now, I think it's I think it's better than rushing something through tonight in any way. Find you know, kind oh, of yeah. get it back out there. Find someone who's generally interested in doing this, and if this. Was if it's Hazel, I don't know Hazel, yeah. um, didn't but, go to Frontier. I don't know her very well. Was, very well. was I on coach <coughs> finishing a two or a three year? I think he was a two year. I think he was an appointment. He was an appointment, I, I forget. He was an appointment he, as well, maybe. It, it, it was about to start a new three year, so he just did one of the three years. So it's right. a two year position. So that was a two year, I think so. I think that's, okay. probably the, that's probably the best way to do it anyways, because if there's anybody out there who's interested interested in doing this, they can... How do we add, like, how do we let people know that we... Well, you, just, you gotta come up, you, you just ask them. Face yeah. to face. Kiss the babies. Is Shake that, the hands. Is that kind of... I always start with the part... Is that how you go to this position? No, I, I, <laughs> I start with the part about, hey, you want to go to the inn once a month with a bunch of nice people? <laughs> Do you well, first we go to a school. Really first we go to a survey? school committee meeting. <laughs> I remember we do the superintendent survey. It's so fun. They just no. shred them after we do well, them. <laughs> I can't remember how many years was it. It was just two years ago. And I came in May just to see what was going on here. And now I'm. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden <laughs> I came to a meeting. And somebody handed you a packet. Yeah, you're like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I kind of set you next, up for that, didn't I? The next, next month. Any arms. All right, so anyway, so the meeting date conflict, so um, should we keep the date and change the location? 
Bill. I mean, we could go. So we you could try to move meet in the library in the center of town or the town hall. What's the date and time again? The school the one room schoolhouse. Or the one the room schoolhouse house? again. That's kind of traditional. That was last year. That was my first actual meeting. Was that was at, awesome at the schoolhouse. Okay. Have a short agenda. What? Have a short agenda. Oh, yeah. so Somebody we brought You're bringing all your Ema data. data. We 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 look, we'll see you your Ema data my first meeting. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> if we can't, we'll meet on the front steps. <laughs> it's just um, a little padlock. I have a key. We, yeah. we have a key. Oh, do you have a key? We do. Who owns it? The town? The uh, Conway Historical school. Society. It was brought right. down with the town. Oxen. The town. I got a whole bunch of pictures, actually, if you want them. Or if you want them. We were doing family photos. Do we dress in... Oh, no. 1900 attire? No. no. Much more casual than that. Just oh, what a word. So the, yeah, 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 why don't you wear that outfit? If you really want to. <laughs> what time is it? Four on the 18th? FCAT, would need, FCAT needs like a 50 foot extension cord because the power is in the sheep barn across the little right of way. Jeez. But we did it in the morning. There's no more sheep there. It's just called the sheep barn. <laughs> now it's just a storage the barn. Yeah, yeah, we did it the on the morning and the Saturday. For the 250th anniversary. That is probably the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Be sure you're charged. Now there's no school on June 18th, so whatever, you know, just to let you know. It is right. at 7 o'clock right now. On June 18th. It's going to be cold in there at 7 or really hot, though. Is there, it's perfect. <gasps> what if it's, it's freezing? Is there, the wood still works? It's going to be dark. Yeah, it still it'll, works. It'll be. No, it won't be dark. It won't be quite dark. We want to move it to five. It's eight o'clock now. Move it to I have morning. a sun going at five thirty. Oh, oh. oh. So on that day. On that day, it's one of those back-to-back -back ones, which is sun only goes long. They, they like to talk. Uh, I'm um, okay with the twentieth or or the thirteenth. Oh, I see. Right. Or the eleventh. So is there any reason not 11. to do it the 11th, I got earlier that day. day instead of like before 5:30? Because school's out. I'm always open to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we could. So school's out, so we could be. So what if we like business? Hour. Give coffee and mimosas. You can do it in the morning. I'll, I'll be <laughs> I'll be on summer vacation. Like so. Um, are there any conflicts with? The afternoon of the day. So why don't I do this? Why don't I do because only not being here is kind of crucial too. So why yeah. don't I doodle the whole day, mm. and everybody right. can pick times throughout the whole day into the evening, yeah. and I'll just block out. The, All right. I think it's, the Sunderland School Committee is the only thing. And then the other, do. the other thing would be to hold it the week before, while the building is still occupiable. Or is that yeah. time crunch? That's, that's a tough, that's yeah. a tough, it's the last week of school. Yeah. You know, yep. we already got two on the Tuesday. Sure. And I, I think every night's a different sure. graduation or yep. retirement or. Yeah. All right. 18. Goodness, it's summer celebration. Yeah. <laughs> so doodle poll for the 18th. <laughs> All right. So, yes, doodle poll. Write this stuff down there. So. <laughs> All right. What else do we got here? Um, we did, so, okay, so I have this in front of me, sorry. Um, we already did capital project committee. We did all the reports, so. All right, then my report just be quickly. Session. Right, oh, my report just has to quickly be done. Um, just because there's only one thing on there. There's only one thing I really want to go over. They already talked about all the, uh, Positions part. and stuff. Now, there's a new interpretation of the school choice rules right now um, that was just put down by Desi in early May um, that basically said that regional schools that are not regionalized from K to 12 um, must do not get automatic entry from the sending schools into the regional schools. Okay, sure. so um, what that would mean is that you had a and this this goes into effect. Everybody's grandfathered in starting <coughs> now. So everybody's grandfathered in, but next year it's starting any new school choice students. So if you had a, someone entered in kindergarten and said, oh, I want to go to front, I want to go to Alton Conway and then to Frontier, they don't automatically get in. It'll be a lottery to get into Frontier pending the space. I can't predict seven years from now what the space level of Frontier is going to be. Um, and you know, our past practice has been if you school choice in the elementary school, you automatically got into Frontier. So. Um, this, so we didn't know where this was coming from, and I've since had a conversation with Mike Morris, who's the superintendent in Amherst, 
this affects Amherst as well. Um, and they actually have a, a lottery system for school choice for the middle school because of the way their numbers are situated. We've always had, we've only had a block at the last couple of years, but usually there's been enough you know, slots where it didn't really make a difference. But he um, contacted the state um, and you know, to find out what the heck's going on here. They didn't even realize from his conversation that this impacted us in this way. He did a little more research and there's only nine districts that this affects. And you probably could take a population of those nine districts and put them in the Brockton High School. Um, but so they said, why don't you file for special legislation to allow regional schools to work in agreement with their sending elementary schools to take their school choice students. And so if you can pass that law. So right now he is sending a letter to Joan um, Cromford to propose this bill as part of the budget. Apparently they add on these little, these really non, not really big impact bills to the budget bill. Um, and you know, I'm signing on to that. So, so if it gets passed, then we won't see any change. If it doesn't get passed, then I'm gonna have to add to the school choice. This does not guarantee placement. Although we've gotten everybody in so far, but this doesn't guarantee placement. And that, you know, if someone was kind of nervous about it, <clears throat> they could cause them a choice to choose a different elementary, but I think we can get everybody in. But, but it <clears throat> creates this dialogue that we wouldn't have to do otherwise. Right. right. And it's also so far down the road, seven years down the road for the first class for that. Because right. mm -hmm. we don't get a lot of school choice through the years. We get a few here and there, but um, I don't even know how they're going to track that. But that's a whole other side conversation. So anyways, that's what's going on there, and hopefully we'll get that. Hopefully I'll report to you in June that that got passed moving forward. Um, okay. And any other stuff was just the, right now the the budget's in the Senate. Um, this this week they're doing all the deliberations about what they're doing. When I went to the House, I kind of give you a list on the second page of my thing about how they just kind of basically cut everything that was all those little miracle things that we were hoping um, to help us with um, from rural aid to transportation and circuit breaker, all the different kind of things um, got shot down. So um, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of things in the Senate right now. I sent that link out to all of you, but we'll see what happens this week. So would there ever be a negative thing that school, I mean, would there ever be a time where you would, wouldn't want to potentially take a student just because the debt of so, their needs would outweigh their so we can't, we can't do that. We can't. We can't be selective. So of you have who to the just school. take them all. It has to be a general um, lottery. Okay. okay. However, we did last year stop school choice in seventh and eighth grade. The current eighth grade maxed out. Right. So last year, seventh grade, we said no more school choice coming into seventh grade. So no more, no third party people could. You know, if you started somewhere else, then come for Frontier if you weren't in our district. Because we wanted, to, we had a twenty, I have a twenty-four cap for the middle school. Uh, at least we try every now and then. You start at twenty-four, then some kid moves in, and the schedule works to make twenty-five. But for the most part, we try to do under twenty-four, and most class sizes are between eighteen and twenty-two. Um, we try to keep them that small. So we said no, or else, and so that's what we did. So that was kind of the one year where we had to turn people away. Hmm. But that's the way it happens. And I mm -hmm. think the current sophomore class, the same thing. We had to turn them away. I think it was in eighth grade. We shut that one down. So, but you know, in right now, the there's so much um, movement for school choices. People are there's a lot of struggling districts around us, and so we're seeing a lot more <coughs> movement than we have in the last couple of years. Of um, you know, I don't know if we're just kind of we're just kind of far enough away or closer to kind of the less rural environments where they're struggling to hold on to their students um, and we're getting more choice. It's our programming, what, what we can offer, um, those kind of things. But you know, you know, it's I, kind of it's spiraling on itself. I, it only takes one bad hire to like implode one of these districts. And you know, you saw that in Pioneer and with the superintendent and you saw that in Mohawk with a finance director that shuffled off after a year of imploding that budget and um, it's just amazing how vulnerable we are to something like that and I think that's where we've dodged the bullet our bad hires haven't been that bad and our good hires have been really good and we've 
done a lot yeah. more of those than bad ones. Um, yeah, there's some truth there too. But then you, we also you have those things we always talk about is that you start getting less, not enough people, then you don't have enough people to support. I don't know a, a, a softball team. You know what I mean? Then all of a sudden a few softball players go, well, I really love softball, I'm going to go to a school that has that. Mm -hmm. But that goes with anything. I just yeah. use the word softball. It could be a, a athletics, it could be arts, it could be AP offerings, it could be special ed programs, it could be you know any of those things. And all of a sudden then you don't, then you lose those. And those softball players were also in the musical. And then all, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, it's just kind of, it's a, we created a mess as a society with school choice. We're winners of it right now, but it doesn't, doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel good publicly to be a winner in that, you know what I mean, in the sense of, you know, because we're taken away from one and, you know. Right. Anyway, we can talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you good? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So we have to go to executive session for Chapter 30A, Section 21A2 and A3 to discuss Strategy with respect to collective bargaining for unit theory teachers and instructional assistants and uh, preparation negotiations for non-union personnel um, and to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. So we're going to just do the both together, yeah. but we're basically, for definition, we're talking about teacher's contract, the IA contract, and non-union personnel contracts. Or yeah. So, Mike, we need to do so, a roll call. You got to do a roll call. And then we'll right. be adjourning. And then, then there will be no vote we'll after adjournment right afterwards. So, mm -hmm. so, so we have to vote to we'll not return enter to into. Uh, yes. Roll call vote to go so into roll executive call session. Roll call vote to enter executive session. You don't need to vote for it. Oh, yes. yes. You need to vote to call it. Yes. 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 Okay. I, I, and I. Uh, I, I.